How do we bring the year to an end as we come closer to the end of 2021 with all of the changes that we've gone through in this year with the with the pandemic surging the third and fourth time in many different parts of the world, with climate change, with the Glasgow COP26 meetings, maybe giving us a little glimmer of hope for humanity to, to come into greater stewardship in the earth, and with the time of reflection, really making all of us aware of how fragile human life is and how fragile our environment is. As we approach the end of the year, I'd like to share with you how shamans prepare for death. We don't prepare for death only at the end of our lives. We prepare for death every time the seasons change, every time we experience a solstice, when the light begins to shift from darkness to, to illumination once again, or the other way around, when the darkness becomes predominant and the days become shorter. We prepare to die to who we have been, to everything that we have known, to the way things have worked, so that we can experience ourselves freshly and newly. We die twice a year in the shamanic traditions, and not only at the very end of our lives, and this is the preparation for letting go of the way that things have always been, so that we can have a fresh outlook and new experience even as old situations come up again, as old themes and old stories resurface, that we can face them differently and newly with newfound optimism and newfound creativity and new eyes that can see opportunity where everybody else is seeing obstacles and impediments. We prepare to die by letting go of everything that has been until this moment. Of course, we don't let go of our house or our dog or our spouse or our children. We let go of the rigid forms that we have been holding them until this minute so that we can see things as if for the first time, so we can acquire that beginner's mind that comes with the rebirth as the sun begins another cycle, great cycle in the sky. The beginner's mind is the one that allows us to experience things as if for the first time, that allows us to have that experience of never been there, never done that. Even if we're having the same meal or the same engagement with a partner or with a child, we can have a new approach and a, and a new experience of the same dynamic that we have gotten stuck in in the past. So let me give you an example. The, as we come to the end of the year, I personally am having to, to let go of relationships with family members that are getting older, that are drawing to the end of their lives. And I want to be able to see them in their beauty and their glory and not somebody who's losing their vitality and their youthfulness and being taken over by wrinkles and getting close to death. That may be a reality. But it's not the reality that I want to wake up to the morning after the solstice. I want to wake up to a fresh and new experience of this person that I love that's approaching the most extraordinary moment of their lives. We develop the beginner's mind and that attitude of never having experienced that before. This brings us freshness into every day, newness, into every moment, every engagement with someone, and allows us to see the person that we've been with for a decade or three decades and to see them with new eyes. Who is this wonderful being that I'm waking up next to again today? Ah, listen to that bird singing. Wow, I've never seen that hummingbird before. The color of these flowers, how do we see them as if for the first time? This is the mind of the beginner. There's nothing more tiresome and burdensome than speaking with someone who's an expert all the time, who knows all the answers, who has given up on the mystery of life for the 20 explanations on how the cosmos works. Really, let me surround myself with people that don't know, that are ready to discover, 
that don't have a ready explanation for anything, but can step into the mystery, the mystery of who they are, of who we are, and of who we are becoming. I'd like to share with you a shamanic strategy that you can use for closing out the year and preparing yourself for the new, for the new beginnings that are offered to us as we complete this cycle of the sun. In effect, the new year that we celebrate on December 31st is kind of an artificial disconnected from nature date because the real change happens during the solstices. So join me in the summer and winter solstice that we celebrate December 21st. For some of us in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the summer solstice and the north is the winter. But these are the turning points when the light changes, when the extremes of the sun go the furthest north and the furthest south. June 21st, December 21st. And of course, go celebrate. Go celebrate on the 31st to welcome the, uh, the next party. But that's not the sacred date. So how do we shed everything that has burdened us during this year so that we can come into a new cycle of the sun clean, open, with open hearts, with open souls, and predisposed to the positive, to co-creating with spirit in the most beautiful of ways? Well, the first thing we do is we have to brush off the old year, take out the dust of all of those months and weeks out of our chakras and put all of those burdensome topics and difficult and challenging times that we face, put them into the fire. Not that the fire will magically take them away, but that as we release the energy that we have trapped into those difficult, challenging topics, from climate change to um, politics to economics to as we release the energy that we have bound into them we discover ways that we can be incredibly effective that we can be part of the solution and not part of the problem so we begin with the cleansing process with your feathers and if you don't have condor feathers like I do which are perfectly legal here by the way where we are then you can get some, some feathers from a local bird, from a turkey or from whatever it is that flies in your part of the world and drops feathers in your backyards. And if you don't have feathers, you can use actually your hands for do, doing the same kind of cleansing of removing those energies that are stale and stuck and cleansing them out of your body and out of your field, and out of each one of your chakras. <clears throat> I use these to work on my patients and the, the men and women that I, that I work to help heal. And this not only is able to, these feathers are not only able to cleanse and to smooth out the field, but they're fantastic for cutting toxic cords that keep us connected to people and to situations that we don't want to take with us into the new year. The people and the dramas and the situations that we're done with, finished with, whew, we can cut them and <clears throat> release those energies that... Um, are no longer ensnaring us and keeping us down. So the next thing that we want to do together to release the year, to release it, to let it go, let it go back into the sands of time. It's completed its course so that we don't drag all of the drama and unfinished business with us into the new cycle of the sun so we can approach it newly and with fresh eyes and open hearts is to place into our stick, all of the drama that we were caught up in, all of the things that kept us up at night, uh, that we wish we would have done differently, that we judge ourselves for. And I want you to blow three of these into this stick. Maybe that person that was not kind towards you or perhaps that you were unkind towards, or you did not forgive. 
maybe that situation where you were misunderstood or you tried to make a difference but you couldn't, you were, you were not able to release that to the fire, that stale energy that we don't want to drag with us into the new year. And third, I'd like you to select one global event that didn't work for you, that was frustrating for you. Maybe it was, uh, it was the police acting out wrongly in parts of where you live. Maybe it was the greenwashing that so many companies do with, when faced with climate change that was so deeply frustrating how we're not taking action. Maybe it was some injustice that you witnessed or, or maybe some political move that was totally illegitimate and unfair in your eyes. Let's put them into that stick. For me, it's the abuse of the many by the few. It's the mentality that, that creates masters and slaves and that keeps such a portion of the population living and bare subsistence that uh, keeps so much suffering in humanity for, for the benefit of truly the few. And that's, that's very, very painful to me to witness and to see not only in America and in Europe, but in the third world and with the immigrants that are fleeing their countries, with their children that are stuck in borders and looking for a better life. That injustice really touches me deeply. I want to release that to the fire so that I can become an agent of change and not just angry about what's happening in the world. I release that unfairness, that frustration that keeps me paralyzed. And now I bring it to the fire. I release this to the fire. All of those circumstances and stories that, that kept me disempowered, frustrated, angry, that made me act wrongly, unjustly perhaps. I release them to the fire. Releasing the light that's been bound in all of those stories. And now I pass my hand through the flames and bring that light back to my heart. That I may use that energy and that light to become part of the solution to help dream a new world of justice and of peace and of beauty into being. The fire ceremony is the ceremony of our lineage of the medicine men and women that I trained with and that are the great tantric practitioners that transform energies. This is that tantric path of turning poison into nectar, of turning pain into, into beauty, and of turning ignorance, ignorance and suffering into wisdom. This is the shaman's way where we release the light that has been bound around our suffering, our obstacles, the, th the places that perhaps we were not as honorable or in integrity or perhaps judgmental when we could have thought differently. We release this to the fire that in this coming year, in this year that's approaching, that begins on the 21st of December in a few days, that you can dedicate yourself to the kind of exquisite, truthful, in total integrity, thoughts and actions that can truly make a difference in our world that we become these agents of transformation, men and women that are fearless in the face of great fear and, and great uncertainty in the world, that can practice truth when the world is full of lies, 
and that can become a beacon of light when we find ourselves surrounded by the dance of the shadows. I invite you to prepare to leave all of that behind. And once we do, we're all going to be able to shine with our own light. And this is the great gift, one of the great gifts that the Buddha left us when he passed away. He said, shine with your own light. Go beyond, go beyond the beyond. Dare to dream a new world, a new human being into being. Dare to dream the world into being. Shine with your own light. Thank you very much for joining me today. And I wish you the most beautiful and, and successful and healthy and healthful New Year.